great leader in Cade McNamara. What will you remember about your time together and winning the 2021 Big Ten Championship in this moment? Yeah, you know, I still talk to Cade to this day. Uh, he's a warrior, man. You know, he's a warrior on that field. He's a great leader. And uh, he, he led that team to uh, that, that 2020 or uh, well, 2021 championship uh, that, was, that was right here. So uh, great quarterback, great leader. I expect big things from him at Iowa. And, uh, and I wish the best uh, on him. And uh, hopefully uh, I can meet him here uh, meet him here again. Any stories about playing with Kate that you remember the most? Um, any, no, no stories, but like I said, he's a, he's, a, he's a warrior on that field. Like I remember sometimes like he would go down and you know, he just took a big blow. You know, and uh, he'd get up like a, like a soldier and keep it pushing because he knew that's what he had to do as a quarterback. He was he was the leader. He was the general. You know, and so um, really no no stories that I can necessarily think of right now. But as a player, he he's a dog. He's the he's the dog in. Uh, well, I had a doctor's appointment the other day. I believe he cleared me. You know, I might have to double check with him to make sure uh, that, that that was the last appointment I'm cleared. But uh, I think I'm good. So now it's just you know being smart, going to camp, um, and uh, doing whatever I, I have to do to make sure this team is in the best position to win and uh, attack the season. How difficult is it going to be to be smart and take it easy or take it slow? Uh, it, it's not going to be too difficult. You know, I have the right people around me. Coach Hart, you know, he knows how to. You know, he's been playing this game for a while. You know, he's been hurt. You know, he ha he knows how to manage. Um, you know, how many reps and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, I'm not worried at all. You know, I'm, I'm going into camp with the mindset of, you know, I'm fully healed. You know, if they want me to do a hit and drill, I'll do the hit and drill. You know, I'm not. I'm me now. You know, it's no longer. You know, Blake has a bad knee. Like my knee is fine. My knee is perfect. Um, I'm just ready for some ball now. Is there a point this summer where you Say that one time. Is there a point where you realize, okay, I'm back? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you could you could say a couple weeks ago, like you know, that's when I realized, like, okay, my speed's my speed's coming back. And then I, then I started feeling the burst, and then my cutting ability, like you know, there, there was definitely a point in time where like, okay, I, I like where this is heading. You know, I see the I see the hard work paying off. You know, the knees feeling great, the body's feeling good. Um, so they're, they're definitely a couple weeks ago. I would say uh, that really kicked in. I'm like, okay, this, this is nice. You know? Speaking of the hard work, you're quite familiar with, with here with Indians, but the reason you came back, as you said, uh, it was more than that. Can you just speak a little bit to, I guess, the, the phrase you use? I, I may be paraphrasing, but natty or bust. Yeah. Can you just elaborate on that? How some people might say you could have a success without a natty. Right. But what is that? What does it mean? I mean, the, the way I view it, right? And, you know, I hold my teammates, I hold myself, and the coaches hold us to a high standard, right? And part of me coming back was, I said, unfinished business. You know, that was that was my thing, unfinished business. On the field, off the field, you know, in general. But we have a team that is very special right now. You know, a lot of guys come back. You know, JJ has a, another year under his belt. You know, um, we have transfers. You know, Drake Nugent, you know, LD, you know, Big Hint. Right? You know, up front, we're great. Team-wise, we're great. We've been working our butts off this year, I mean, this summer. Um, and I believe my guys. Like, I believe the camaraderie, the, the, the bro brotherly love that we have within each other right now is it, crazy. And, you know, what I'm telling the guys now and what the coaches are telling us, and, you know, it's just day-to-day -day now. Like, you know, we, we, we've had enough dreaming, we've had enough talk about the national championship, and, you know, now it's just day to day. You know, we gotta beat ECU first. You know what I'm saying? We, we can't think too far ahead. You know, be where our feet are. You know, we have to take care of the regular schedule and beat our rivals. Um, and then, you know, if we get there, we just gotta get over the hump. But, you know, for me, you know, I have high standards, so yeah, it, it's win or bust. And I think the guys know that, but we don't, we don't have to say anything. You know, we, we know what it is. You know, talk is cheap, and uh, right now we're just focused on camp on the, uh, on the second. And, uh, you know, we're going to go from there. We're going to attack each and every day and try to get better. Um, and and that's, that's what we're doing, man. You know, day to day, man, being where our feet are. Is that the shift this winning has created? Because it was last year, um, you guys had just won a Big Ten title, but people, maybe it was still sort of still, but it's still improvement mode, and you guys were saying, beat Michigan State and Ohio State the same year. Win another Big Ten title, another win in Natty. There were steps, there, there were layers to it. Have you now, with Pat, is that part of the evolution? Is 
not, I mean, you know, everything's still the same. It's still beat Michigan State. It's still beat Ohio State. You know, it's still win the Big Ten Championship. It's still, you know, go to the college football playoffs, go to Natty. Like, it's still that. But we don't have to talk about it as much, you know, because we know what the goals are. You know, and like I said, you know, talk is cheap. You know, now it's just putting in the work. You know, how can we get better? You know, day to day. How can we get better than we were yesterday? You know, because we know what the end goal is. So we don't have to talk about it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because all the guys, we know, we want it, we smell it, you know? And so, you know, I'm glad where we're at right now. Um, this team, like I said, is really special. A lot of special players, man. I could, I could name a lot, but I think you guys know the special players. And, uh, you know, I, I love where our team is. You know, I love how Coach Harbaugh is uh, managing the team along with the other coaches. Um, it's been great, you know. Uh, you sitting back to the hall right now, no complaints. Like there's been a conversation about running backs in the NFL and the way the NFL values the running back position. I wonder how that sits with you as a guy who's going to play running back. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a little frustrating. Uh, you know, I'm not there yet, so I can't speak for the players that are literally going through it. Um, but I see that, you know, they're having their meetings and uh, hopefully, you know, things can, can change. You know, because the, the running back position has always and still is a valuable position. And I think it means a lot to the game. Um, you know, you have greats. You know, the Walter Payton, the Barry Sanders, many of you have now, like you know, Derrick Henry and you know, all the guys. So it's like, you know, those guys mean a lot to the game, man. Why, why not treat them as such? You know, but like I said, I can't talk too much about it. Yeah, it frustrates me from the outside looking in, but I'm not there. You know, I'm not there yet. So I don't want to speak too much on it, but, you know, looking at it, it it's a little frustrating. Like one school of thought maybe that as a running back you have a certain amount of time to play and you want to be able to maximize what you can earn in that amount of time. Did that play in for you for you in thinking about whether to come back and play another year at Michigan or go on to the NFL and kind of start? start I mean, that you know, uh, NIL um, is great, um, but for me it, it wasn't uh, I'm coming back because of NIL. You know, it's kind of like, okay, that's a bonus. You know, that's great, you know. Um, but that, that wasn't anything for me. It was honestly the bigger picture. You know, I came back, got my degree. Um, you know, we have one heck of a team coming back. Um, you know, it's a, to, to do the goals we set out to, we're setting up to do. You know, and bring something real nice home to Ann Arbor. Like, like if I can clarify there, John's right? question, um, you, you're cleared to go full full blown, right? I am good. Have the coaches said that too? Like everybody said yeah, you're good to go. Good. Like I said, I got it. I had a doctor's point the other day. Okay. And uh, the doctor cleared me. So I, I guess maybe I should double check with him just to make sure that was the official clear. But uh, I'm feeling great, so I'm going to clear myself. I'm good to go. So when's the first time that you'll actually get on the field with the team and everything? Uh, second. I'll be out there. I'm, I'm already on the field, you know. I'm, I'm already out there cutting and stuff, you know. We don't have practice or anything, but I'm, I'm, I'm out there putting in work, you know. Uh, you know. As soon as camp starts, I'll be out there. I guess reports out there your coach Rick Marball miss four games yeah. to start the season. How do you think the team will take that on game days and Saturdays? Will that be strange? Yeah, I mean, I don't, like I said, I, I don't really know too much about the whole situation. I, I don't really know what's going on. Uh, but, you know, we're going to treat each game the same. You know, we know Coach Harbaugh, whether he's there or not. If he's not there, he's going to be there in spirit. And he, he's prepared us enough. You know, so those four games, we can rally together. Like I said, if anything, it's going to light a fire under us and make us want to win even more. You know, so, you know, we love Coach Harbaugh. We're all behind him. You know, we're trying to you – know, Coach Harbaugh's a great coach. I mean, he's a great human being. He's done so much good things for the community, for us. You know, uh, you, you hate to see it, but like I said, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. You know, but if, if that is the case, uh, we're gonna keep playing ball and we're gonna play for him. Like you mentioned, this is a special group a few times. What's it like to be a part of something that is so special? Uh, yeah, it feels great. You know, walking into Schimbeckler Hall every day, um, walking into the weight room. You know, looking, watching guys lift, watching guys sweat. You're like, ooh, I can't wait to go to, the, can't wait to go to war with them, you know, I can't wait to hit the field with them, you know, and, uh, you know, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good when you have a great group of guys around you, uh, from the offensive line to the quarterback to, you know, sharing a running back room with some great running backs to the defense, you know, it's overall, you know, great players, great coaches, uh, and going into the season, that's all you can ask for, you know, and, you know, now camp coming up on, on Tuesday, uh, it's time to put in that work, you know, it's time to put everything else aside and, you know, strap up and uh, get ready uh, for the season. Hey, Blake. You and Kate McNamara.
accomplished a lot in 2021. Now with Cade going to Iowa, I was just wondering if you could kind of just describe what you could bring to Iowa and just kind of your connection and relationship. Yeah, like I said, you know, Cade's a great leader, um, great great human being, and he, he's a general, you know, at that quarterback position. And, uh, he's going to lead Iowa. Uh, they're going to they're win some games, and, um, you know, they might turn that thing around from, uh, from last year. You know, I, I expect some big things from Cade, you know. Um, Cade and Eric, they have that connection, great players. Great players, great teammates. Um, they should do big things, and you know, I'm rooting for the best. You know, like I said, hopefully uh, we both have wonderful seasons and we can beat each other well here. Hey, Blake, you mentioned that NIL was kind of a bonus, right? Not the reason why you came back, but a nice add-on. Yeah. What do you make of the one more year fund, that campaign that, you know, Valiant and Ray's hopefully keep, you know, you and three other guys around? What was that support like knowing that I'm not coming back for this, but if I do come back, the fans really want us to come back and yeah. play one more year? What was yeah, that like? by that time, I already said I was coming back, um, but it, it was great, you know, being able to get some of the other guys uh, that might not necessarily, you know, be targets in the marketing world, um, you know, because sometimes, you know, it's unfair, but, you know, I, I want my offensive linemen to get as much marketing as they can, and sometimes these businesses don't necessarily go to the offensive linemen, they go to the skill players, you know, the guys that scored a touchdown, but without them, so we ain't scoring no touchdowns, you know what I'm saying? So be able to get them some uh, some some cheese and uh, you know I think it's amazing. Like I said, you know NIL has has been really good uh, to us, uh, you know my teammates and I. And uh, like I said, it's a bonus. You know it's still all about ball, but you know who, who would turn down a, a little bit of money while you're playing a little bit of ball? You guys have beat Ohio State obviously the last two seasons and. At that point, before it was an everyday conversation. Is that are they still part of the everyday oh, conversation with you guys? And, and if so, how? Yeah, you know, they're still part of everyday conversation. You know, we still have that beetle how people. You know, if you didn't, that means your head got too big, and you and you think you're good, you're too good. You know, you're too good for your stuff. And we're we're not that. You know, we're 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 not complacent. You know, we want more. You know, uh, so we still have that period center spot. You know, we're still thinking about Ohio State all the time. Um, but like I said, you know, uh, right now it's just, you know, being where our feet are, getting ready for camp, man. For you personally, not being able to play in the TCU game, obviously, yeah. I mean, as a player, how much was it frustration? Was it, like, I don't want to say helplessness, but just not being out, being able to be out there with your call teammates? Helplessness. That's how I felt. You know, that's how I felt on the sideline, on crutches, man. Uh, I'm looking at the defenses. The only thing I can do is really just bring my teammates up and tell them what I'm seeing. You know, and you, that might go a long way, but I was just, in my head, I'm thinking like, hey, like, what could I do? If I was out there, what would I do? You know, what, could I make someone miss? Could I score a touchdown? You know, so all these things, all these emotions were running through my body, and it's, it was frustrating for sure. You know, it, it was tough. Uh, it, it was definitely tough. It's like, like, Yeah, yeah I, I do uh, remember telling uh, Coach Harbaugh I was coming back, and uh, it, it was a great day. It was a great feeling to finally, you know, because like I said, for a while, one day I wake up, I was declaring. The next day, I was I'm coming back, you know, so being able to get that off my plate and really just focus on that get back and you know, getting my knee right, it felt great. And being able to tell Coach, you know, someone who I look up to a lot, you know, uh, hey, Coach, I'm coming back to play one more year. You know, let's go do this thing. Um, it was something special. Like I know when you were recruited, you it really came down to Michigan and Ohio State for you. What do you remember about that? Just kind of being recruited by two rivals so heavily. Uh, it, it was a great feeling. You know, uh, I remember I took two officials to two great schools. Um, but for me, like you were going to get good football at both places, and it was really the next. Like setting myself up for life, honestly. You know, the Michigan alumni network. It's, it's something special, man. I tell you that you know we're we're all there for each other. Um, the Michigan, like I said, the alumni, you know, they're there to help the the, the new generation. You know, they're there to help you and, and build up your future. You know, and I can't appreciate them enough. You know, they're there for you, and uh, it's it's something special about Michigan. You get the best of both worlds, man. You get good sports, and you get good academics, and. Uh, it sets you up for a successful uh, life. Do you ever think about like, what if I made the other decision? Nope. <laughs> Like the more serious though, took a trip to the museum recently. What did you guys gain from that? How did you know that? Yeah, I mean I think it's I think it's great to go to any museum, you know, Holocaust Museum, African American Museum. I think I think it's great to learn. You know, who doesn't want to learn, you know, about whatever it may be. 
you know. So I, I think it was very important that, you know, we, we went to the museum to learn and gain some knowledge, you know, especially nowadays, you know, if you post something on, on Twitter or something like that, you know, you, you could be bashed and stuff like that. So it, it's just g good to learn uh, what to say, what not to say, learn more about, you know, whatever it is, you know, the culture, religion, what, whatever, it's good to learn, you know. So go to as many museums as you as you can just to learn about everything, you know. You can never, you know, not learn enough. You know what I'm saying? So it was a good experience. Lake, can you kind of describe the dynamics of the running back room in terms of how creative when you got Donovan and yourself and yeah. two or three of her, maybe even a freshman yeah. involved? Oh, man. Do you guys incorporate how creative, like, hey, I, you put Donovan in the slot, or do you, you guys have input on that? How does that work out? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you have diverse running backs, right, you know, you can put them wherever you want to put them. You know, put them in the best position so the team can win. You know, so it starts with Coach Hart. You know, great running back coach, great guy. You know, we've we've learned so much from Coach Hart. It's crazy. You know, he, he he's just a he's brought our running back room so close together that like we, we can't be pulled apart. You know, so it starts with him, and then you have myself, you have Donovan. You know, two guys that just push each other, not selfish at all, just want the best for each other. We all try to sharpen each other. You know, on and off the field. And then you have, you know, guys like C.J. Stokes or Tavi Dunlap or Leon Franklin. Then you got the freshman, you know, Benjamin Hall. You know, you got Cole Cabana. You know, so we, we got some running backs. You know, running backs are, are just guy here or trying to take everything in, maybe learn a little, little something here and there. Um, then you got, you know, the seasoned veterans. If that diminishes your 28 or 30 carries, do you have a problem with that? Would you, would you rather be in more of a sweet spot at a 16 to 20 carry? Yeah, I, I, 16, 20, that's fine with me. You know, whatever, whatever gets the job done, you know. If, if they need me to one game, carry the ball 40 times, I'm good for it, you know. Uh, I'm good for it, man. You know, I, I know the work I put in, but if they want me to carry it 10 times, I can do something with 10, you know. And I, I know I have guys in front of me, you know, that are going to pave the way for uh, our, us running backs. You know, uh, you know, whatever the team needs me to do, I'm there for them. You know, whether that be 10 carries, whether that be 40 carries, you know. It, it doesn't matter to me. I'm there to play the game I love, and uh, that's what I love doing, you know, going out there every Saturday. Hey, I have a question for you back here. I already got the picture. I got the Instagram picture. <laughs> uh, Friday Night Lights, having you know, having events for kids. Yeah. What does that mean to you to help these kids maybe experience life that they don't get to do? And yeah, I mean, it, it means a lot to me. You know, holding my Friday Night Light camps is, is uh, something special because, you know, you, you only get – high school football once, right? Not that this camp's for high school football, but I name it Friday Night Lights because Friday Night Lights is something special, as y'all all know. Um, but holding these free football camps to kids that maybe can't provide it, if I, if I did charge, or can't provide it. You know, it's something special. Giving them some exposure, giving them some techniques, giving them uh, some motivation. You know, that like, if I did it, hey, you can do it too. This is what you gotta do, you know? And so, you know, it means a lot. You know, it's, I'm big on community, and it brings the community together. Um, and that's what I love about uh, these uh, these youth football camps um, that I hold uh, Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, like so you mentioned the benefit of the beach or the drill. How do you feel like that benefits? You know, we, we were talking about this uh, not too long ago, and it was, we basically said uh, to be the man, you gotta beat the man. And um, you know, Georgia's at the top right now, and uh, if we want to be at the top, we gotta beat them. You know, so you know, just just implementing you know a Georgia drill, just like we implemented a Ohio State drill. You know, just Keeping that in the back of our minds, right? You know, just, just always, always keeping it there. We don't got to talk about it too much, but always keeping it there and just driving us forward and, and just reminding us, hey, we ain't the top dog right now. You know, and we got more work to do. You know, let's get to work. Yeah. Like you. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you honestly. Uh, um, I, I haven't done the. I wasn't here in the, um, the spring, and that, that's when they put it in. So. Uh, I can't wait to see the uh, ball. You know, I can't wait to see a camp. Like, what does it mean to be in a league that has Braylon at Wisconsin, Katron and Nick at Penn State, Trevion and Mayan at Ohio State, you and Donovan? Like, it seems like this league has had a running back renaissance. Mm -hmm. While the NFL's starting to like trend away from that, the Big Ten seems to be leaning into it. What does it mean to you guys to, to be a part of that? I mean, it's something special, right? You know, having uh, all these great running backs, you know, that are really successful for different teams. Uh, and, I mean, it shows you. What the Big Ten is, right? It shows you, you know, we have great offensive line, we have great running backs, uh, we can run the ball, we can pass the ball, you know, whatever. Um, so it, it's, it's nice, you know, it's like competition, you know, who, who, 
who doesn't love a little bit of competition, you know? Like you said, you named all the great running backs in this league. Uh, so it's great playing against them. It's great seeing what they do each week, each weekend and week out. Um, so it's great being in this conference. But, uh, you know, hopefully the running back will, will fix what's going on. I mean, uh, the NFL will fix what's going on uh, with the running backs and uh, we'll go from there. But honestly, I'm not even worried about, uh, you know, that right now. I'm really just focused on the it's, season. It's going to be a little tough to to not keep an eye on what the other running backs around the league are doing, knowing that there's so many good ones around, like this season as it goes? Oh, I mean, you, you might see something on Twitter if you're on Twitter or something like that, but, you know, you got to compete with yourself at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? For me, I'm just trying to be better than I was last year. You know, and, and that's all I can ask for myself, and that's all I can give to my team. And, uh, I got to tell everyone, like, the individual, individual success comes from team success, um, and that's what I believe. You know, if your team isn't successful, you're not going to be successful. You know, so, you know, the team comes first, you know, but it, it, it would be cool seeing what all these running backs do. All, it's all great duos, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's going to be great. Like you mentioned, uh, Ladarius earlier, Miles had a bunch of guys returning as well. I know it's not your job or your room, but what have you seen from those guys and how does Coach Moore get to five stars? Yes, I mean, you know, you have these great transfers from Drake to Ladarius to Hank, like, you know, but then we, we have great offensive line, you know what I'm saying? You know, the Trevor Key, Carson Barnes, the Zach Zinner, the you know, Trinity Jones, I can keep going. You know, we, we up front, we're so good. And it starts with Coach Moore. Just like when our RB room starts with Hart, it starts with Coach Moore. And uh, he trains those guys really well. And, uh, you know, those, those transfers are coming right along. You know, they, they look strong. They look they're, they're big. They, you know, they're nasty. Um, so they're going to do some damage this year. Like, I think I saw an interview with you, so you got into house flipping yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, uh, so tell me about that. Yeah, my dad and I, um, we purchased a uh, house back in uh, my hometown and uh, renovated it a little bit. And uh, now it, now it's uh, on the market, you know. And, uh, we had a couple of, about eight people come through the other day. So hopefully uh, it sells fast. But, you know, just like I said, just setting myself up for the future. That's what Michigan is about, you know, setting their, you know, college graduates or why you're in college. But alumni base is crazy. You know, that's not my only investment. You know, I've invested in other things. Uh, but uh, that, that's something that I love. You know, I've always been interested in real estate, so uh, you know, doing that first flip with my dad was, was pretty good. What are your ultimate goals with that platform that you have now? Uh, eventually, I want to get into uh, multi-family homes, you know, apartment complexes, and uh, build up a, a, a business. Um, and, uh, and see how see how far I can take it. You know, I own a bunch of apartment complexes. And have my own management company, you know, keep everything in house, you know, so I don't have to go to a go to a source. I can't be the source, and um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see where my entrepreneurship goals go. But uh, that's what I want to be, you know, entrepreneur, along with uh, you know, getting into sports broadcasting. So uh, we'll, we'll see uh, when the time comes. But that's where I want to take it. You know, slow right now, just flipping single family homes, and then uh, hopefully I get the multi family homes and then go from there. Like the final carries last year were at Ohio State. Yeah. What do you remember those carries and how much you look forward to another chance of playing the Uh I remember uh, every when I went to cut, my knee just gave out. You know, I couldn't cut on it. Uh, that's what I remember. Uh, how excited am I am to play Ohio State? Really excited, you know. But I'm, I'm just excited to be back. You know, it's not necessarily I'm excited to play Ohio State, but I'm just excited to be back on the field with the guys and play a game that I love. You know, a game that, you know, I put my all into, you know, so that's what I'm excited for. It's not necessarily I'm excited to be back there playing, you know, playing Ohio State. I'm excited to play ECU, you know. Uh, I love the game of football, so, you know, going out like that sucked, but, uh, you know, I'm back now and I can't wait. Like, how do you encounter the program's rise, I guess, occurring at the same time there has been, you know, so much kind of drama, I mean, whether it's, you know, Jim exploring the NFL or, you know, JJK thing last year, even this year, including the potential four games So you said, how do you account for the program's rise or explain it at the same time all this other stuff? Yeah, I mean, we don't let that stuff mess with our minds. You know, a lot of people they get in their heads, you know, Coach Harbaugh leaving all right. Coach Harbaugh might get suspended, and they're just like, ah, you know, too much going on. Like, no. Just handle your business, man. You know, everything's going to take care of itself. Okay, if Coach Harbaugh gets suspended, we still got to play ball. Coach Harbaugh's still going to get us right. We're going to go win. 
You know, that's how that's going to end it. But, you know, just a group of guys that are determined to each and every day to figure out a way to win. Um, that's how our rise is, you know. We, we focus on the day-to-day. -day. We don't think too far ahead. We don't think in the past. You know, day to day. Just look back on 2020 versus 2021, and that's going to be obviously the watershed yeah. moment, obviously. I mean, do you think that's kind of what has allowed you guys to kind of yeah. weather all this stuff? I think we had to go through 2020 to get where we are now. Um, you know, guys like Aiden Hutchinson and Josh Ross and, you know, you could say Hassan and uh, those guys, you know, they kind of changed the culture. Um, you know, us leaders, we kind of just picked it right up. You know, when they left, new leaders step up, you know, make sure nothing changes. You know what I'm saying? We only get better. We don't get worse. You know? Speaking of handling your business, you got a couple of banners hanging down at that end of the field in the last two years. What's your level of expectation that in a few months, your team would be playing here for a third? I mean, you know, we, we know what the goals are, you know, and our expectation is to be right back where we were, you know, but better. You know, it, we're not complacent, you know, we're not like, okay, we've had two winning seasons, we can ease up a little bit, we ain't got to work as hard. It's none of that. You know, all the guys are ready, all the guys come to work every day, you know, and put in the work, you know, and, and we, we're hard on each other, you know, we critique each other, we critique our work, and we find, find in the details. Um, so, you know, we expect to be back here. Like, like, what about this team could be potentially even better than last year? You know, I mean, what could be potentially better than last year is, you know, this team has gone through, we've gotten there, right? We've, we've, we've won a lot of games, uh, and we, we, we have some additional pieces. You know, we, we brought some transfers on, and, you know, it's all about the mindset, you know? We don't, we don't get big heads, we just, we just get better, man. You know, and like I said, we smell it. You know, we can do it. We don't have to talk about it, but we can just put in the work. You know, right. and uh, this year, and like I said, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great year. We're just like I said, focusing day to day. You know, you don't get too far ahead, man. Just day to day, man. Everything is gonna take care of itself. But like yeah. yesterday, Ryan Day said that he thought the Ohio State Michigan game should be moved up starting next year because there's a chance that you guys can play Week 12 and then play the championship game. Yeah. Just kind of your thoughts on that. You like where it's at? Do you think it could be? Uh, I mean, personally, I don't have no preference. You know, it doesn't bother me. Um, play week one, seven, or 12. Uh, I think the game's always going to be the game. You know, um, I, I like where it's at, you know, right around. You know, it's like the Thanksgiving game. Um, I, I don't have a preference. You know, I, I, I don't really care. Um, I, I see what he's saying. But I, I personally don't have a preference. Do you think it takes anything away from the rivalry if you play back-to-back -back weeks like that? I mean, no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think uh, if anything, it'll get the fans going even more. What? Get to play again? You know, kind of like last year when there was a chance we could be we could play each other again. So like, you know, I don't think it takes anything away from the game. Uh, but you never know until you see it, right? So because I think that's the thing. It's like last year you would have known going into the game you were definitely going to play again. I think that's why he's saying that maybe that's what diminishes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we can we can try to say what he's trying to say. Yeah, I, we don't really know, but that is what that is what he said. That's okay. what he was worried about. Oh, okay. that it takes so that's away, what he was worried it about. It takes away from the game if you know you're definitely going to play them the next week, okay. like if it's already decided. Right, I mean, the game's the game, man. You know what I'm saying? The game's the game. You know, if you're going to go into the game, be like, oh, we're going to play them next week, so it doesn't matter if we lose this week. Come on, you know what type of mindset is that? You know, that's a loser's mindset. You know, so like. Yeah, if, if I know I'm going to play him next week, I'm still going to play as hard as I am this week than I, than I am next You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to take away from the game. I don't think. You know, and I know my guys, that's not going to take anything away from my guys. You know, we're going to go into the game, each and every game, working our butts off. You know what I'm saying? And we plan on winning. You know, so uh, I, I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, but I, I don't think so. Right. Hey, to what Jim talked about, getting more balance into the offense, I guess. I mean, you see Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I, like I was telling, uh, like I, whatever the coaches need me to do, I'm here. You know, if they need me to run the ball 40 times, I'll run it 40 times. If they need me to run it 10, I'll run it 10. You know, it, it doesn't matter to me. I know the team's going to be ready and I'm willing to do whatever it takes for the team to win. And I know my guys are. You know, I know Diamond's ready. I know my offensive line's ready. I know JJ's ready. So, like, if we want to find more guys, yeah, hey, you know, let's do it. You know, I don't, I don't need the ball 30 times. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care, you know. 
I, I don't. You know, I, I love the game of football. I love playing. I love winning. You know, it's all about winning. So, you know. How much do you but, think getting the more balance is crucial maybe 